Hello everyone and welcome to round 10 of the Magnus Invitational. We are back with the match Yanni Pomnici versus Ding Liren and this is game 3 of their match. So uh, where we left it off, game 1 was a draw, then Ding won game 2 and this is now game 3. We're not going to be showing game 3, I'm just going to show you uh, the position that uh, happened in game 3 because game 3 is a bit too short to show you but it is important for the, for the final result. So we're going to just show you the final position of game 3 and then go straight into game 4. So this is what happened in game 3. In game 3, uh, Nepo was on the attack, he had the white pieces and this is what, what's happening here. Ding has the queen and rook uh, attacking this f5 pawn uh, and Nepo goes knight to g4, just attacks the rook. And here, Ding doesn't really have much choice. He has to capture the pawn with the queen, give up the exchange with check, capture and then play this position being the exchange down. And the game continues uh, with Nepo of course be being better. However, after this knight, capture, knight to g4 idea attacking the rook, Ding did not capture with the queen. Instead, Ding says, uh, said, I I'm not going to be giving any exchanges here, uh, since Nepo gave up the exchange in the previous game and he lost terribly. So I'm just going to play rook captures and keep my exchange. However, in order to save the exchange, he blundered the game. So I'm sure you can see uh, how Nepo wins here. I in case you don't, maybe even pause the video and, and try to figure it out while I give you a couple of seconds. So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting a, a tactic that the Ding missed. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's just knight of six check. Forks the king and the queen, and it's a game over. You lose the queen. Uh, either you move the king and then knight captures queen, or you capture the, the knight and then queen captures queen. So uh, whatever you do, you lose. Uh, and after, of course, uh, uh, this knight to f6 check, Ding resigned the game. So Nepo equalized in the match, and this is what I mean by the title. Uh, it's a very strange that and Nepo misses that uh, knight to c7 fork, now Ding misses knight f6 fork. Uh, are these players just blundering much more in online chess than they would in, in over the board chess? Uh, it's not like these are blitz games, these are 15 minute rapid games, so you, you do have time and, and, and also increment. Uh, so maybe the games are just not as intense and maybe the players are not as careful because there's no maybe because there's no actual rating loss involved it's only online rating uh, but uh, still it's uh, it's hard to say uh, wh whether it, it, it is so uh, but uh, yeah definitely an interesting question uh, do they blunder more online uh, but this is ac what happened in game three so uh, on to game four uh, Nepo equalized the match and now it's game four whoever wins uh, wins the match or if it's a draw we go into Armageddon so let's check out game four and we have to use some special effects to switch uh, the players here there we go uh, again Ding with the white pieces and Nepo with black so Ding opens with knight to f3 uh, when going for the win Ding opens with the reti uh, we have knight to f6 by Nepo g3 and c5 now uh, uh, controlling the center, uh, we have bishop to g2 and now knight to c6. We have castles by ding uh, and e5 now. So with a lot of control of the of the d4 square uh, and here e4. Ding offers the e4 pawn and Yang grabs it. So knight captures on e4 but only temporarily. Now you could trade everything with knight captures on e5 and bishop captures here but ding first improves, rook to e1. Uh, and now knight back to f6. Uh, we have knight captures on e5 and the bishop to e7. And there actually are a few games in the database that reached this position uh, where knight to c3 and c3 were played. Uh, but uh, here Ding just goes for the immediate c4. He says uh, we're going to be fighting for, for the d5 square. Uh, and okay, uh, Nepo castles and Ding goes knight to c3 with more control of the d5 square. And now knight captures on e5. We have rook captures on e5 and d6, pushing the rook back and the rook to e1. So much like you would have uh, in a Sicilian defense, black will have to struggle uh, on how to uh, how to defend this d6 uh, backwards pawn. Or will he be able to push it uh, all the way to d5 at some point. But Nepo immediately changes the, the character of the game by going bishop to e6. He goes uh, for the c4 pawn while giving up his b7 pawn which ding accepts bishop captures on b7 we have rook to b8 and now bishop back to g2 and now bishop captures on c4 so grabbing that pawn and the immediate d4 making it hard for nepo to capture on d4 because if captures captures then there's a double attack on the bishop and on the pawn so once you move the pawn bishop you lose the pawn and now white would have two connected pass pawns on the queen side so first a nepo goes back bishop to e6 and now b3 preparing to develop the dark square bishop so the b2 pawn will not be a target. Uh, we have rook to b4, now supporting uh, the capture on d4, uh, so Ding captures on, uh, on c5 instead. We have d captures on c5, d captures on c5, 
and Ding now uh, offers a queen trade. Uh, I mean, trades queens, captures, captures, and bishop to a3 now. And now, uh, instead of going for the backwards d6 pawn, now you're going to go for the c5 pawn. So bishop to a3, we have rook b to b8, and the knight to a4. And this is just... Uh, uh, very clean how Ding goes after this c5 pawn. So there's a double attack on it and uh, rook d c8. Nepo defends it once again. Rook a to c1 attacking it once again and now uh, defending it once again with knight to d7. Just defending that c5 pawn. And now it's a very instructional uh, how to uh, how to add another attacker to the c5 pawn or, or better yet how to remove one of the defenders. So feel free to pause the video and think about the position a little bit. How would you proceed here? Uh, you know, while well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who found the Ding's move, congratulations on being uh, incredibly creative. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to d5. Here Ding offers his bishop to remove one of the one of the defenders of the c5 pawn. And if you don't capture, then Ding just captures, captures, and wins a pawn. So Nepo did capture with bishop captures, rook captures, now removing one of the defenders while also attacking one of the uh, one of the defenders, uh, and bishop to c6 by Nepo, just defending that uh, uh, defending that knight, and now of course you part with your c5 pawn. We have knight captures on c5, and here Nepo trades knight captures, rook captures, and we get this position where Ding uh, is up a pawn, and it's uh, two pawns against one on the queen side with bishops of opposite colors. So if the rooks come off the board, Nepo has some great chances, but Ding, of course, will try uh, not, to, not to allow the rooks to come off the board. So a6, uh, not allowing the, this pawn to be a target, and now f4. You don't want to allow Nepo some bishop to f3 ideas, which will really limit the movements of the, of the white king, and then you have to worry about all sorts of back rank uh, weaknesses. So f4 instead. Now also making room for the king to be able to enter the game. And h6. Uh, Nepo just makes some breeding room for his king. Now king f2. Ding starts his king march. King uh, Bishop to b5. Uh, and now defending the pawn also. Uh, it's a, it, uh, This is a very nice diagonal for this bishop. Uh, and now king to e3. Ding further improves the position of his king. Rook to d8. Now with some rook to d3 check ideas. Uh, but rook c to c7. And now Ding says I'm just going to gobble up all of these pawns. As I have two pigs on the 7th rank. Uh, we have rook to d3. With check king to e4. And now uh, uh, not going for any rook f8 ideas. Because well there's just this bishop here. X-raying the f8 square. So you, you might just uh, move the rook and pick up that rook. Uh, or rather you will just be able to force more trades. Uh, and you will be... Uh, you will be uh, still uh, up a pawn. So instead, Nepo goes for the counterattack, rook to d2. He wants to grab some pawns here, while also he might be having some ideas with, with bishop to d3 check. So rook captures on f7, he grabs a pawn, and now rook to e8 with check. And with the two rooks controlling the d and the e file, Ding has to go to, uh, to the f file. And it would be a big mistake to go to f3, because here you're just getting mated. Bishop e2 check, you have to go to g2, or f2, doesn't really matter. Bishop g4 check now, not allowing h3. King f1 check here, and now rook to e1 will be checkmate. So very tricky uh, idea by Nepo, Ding spots it, he goes king to f5. And now bishop to d3 check. Again, checking where, where Ding will go. Well, not here as g4 is the only square available to the king. Uh, but now uh, rook captures on h2. Bishop to e2 check is also possible, but king will be very safe uh, on h4. And then even if you go for some g5 check followed by rook to e4 check ideas, the rook can always block with rook to f4. So instead, Nepo goes for rook captures on h2. Now bishop to e2 check might be a bit more dangerous. Uh, but uh, also he allows rook captures on g7. But okay, king to h8, the bishop also guards the h7 square, so you don't have to worry about any uh, further checks. But now Ding almost instantly played bishop to d6. And it's an extremely strong move going for bishop to e5, which will just uh, uh, destroy the black king. So here Nepo finds a, a beautiful idea. Uh, again, bishop to e2, not, not strong, uh, because after king f5, bishop d3, check king f6, and you don't really have any other ways of continuing the attack. So after this bishop to d6, we have rook to f2, a very tricky idea by Nepo, saying that, uh, okay, if you go bishop to e5 now, uh, do you see what Nepo had in mind? Uh, even feel free to pause the video, this, this is a good one. 
So uh, for those of you who decided to pause the video, congratulations. Uh, well, just on your decision to pause the video, uh, you know, it's always nice when you want to improve your tactics. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook captures on e5 and white is getting destroyed because after captures, you have bishop to f5 check, king to h4, and now rook to h2 is checkmate with the pawn and the bishop not allowing the, the white king to escape. So very tricky idea by Nepo, but Ding doesn't fall for it. Ding goes for bishop to c5. Instead, he says, I'm going to go for bishop d4 with the same idea. But now Nepo again stops it, rook to d2. Now bishop d4 will be met with just bishop checks and you pick up the bishop on d4. So Ding again with the same idea, bishop b4. He's now going to go to c3 and attack the king from here. Uh, but Nepo says, no, you don't, rook to c2. And here Ding very happily trades one of the rooks. We have rook captures on c2. Now, of course, not ca uh, of course you don't capture and uh, uh, allow this rook to live, uh, li uh, live as there's some bishop to c3 ideas here. So king captures on g7 and now rook to c7 with check. And here uh, Ding just uh, basically trades down into an endgame where he's up two pawns. But still, uh, perhaps if, if you're incredibly lucky and the Ding does something uh, wrong, uh, maybe you can still pull it off. So king g6, but now rook to c6 with check. The other pawn falls as well, king f7, and now rook captures on h6. We have rook to e2 by Nepo, and now rook to d6. Just going after that bishop, rook to e3, and now king to h4. Uh, we have bishop to e2, uh, and now g4. Uh, Ding starts pushing his connected pass pawns. We have rook to f3 going after the pawn. And now rook to d4 defending. We have rook back to f2 and now king to g5. And it was in this position that Jan Nepomniši resigned the game as he is down three pawns. And of course, uh, this is completely winning for white. So really an incredible game. And I, I really, really enjoyed uh, this moment where, where Ding went uh, bishop to d5. It was it was such an, such an instructive idea. Just uh, remove one of, the, uh, one of the defenders this way. And then it's just uh, w winning a clean pawn. So very nice and very nice by Ding dodging all those uh, tricks Nepo Nepo threw at him uh, and uh, well it's it's basically payback for for blundering that uh, queen in game three, but yeah uh, Nepo uh, Ding wins the game four which means he wins the match and uh, if you haven't uh, seen it yesterday here are the standings after ten rounds so Ding Liren in the lead uh, uh, followed by Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen well they're tied with eleven points Fabiano Coruana with ten points in fourth. Then Maxim Vashiola Graviani Pomnishi with 5, Anish Giri with 4, and Alireza Firuja with 3. And like I mentioned yesterday, two more runs to go, anything can still happen, uh, except for Alireza. Alireza, as he's on 3 points, he cannot reach uh, the, uh, the knockout uh, phase, uh, you know, uh, phase of the tournament, uh, since he can only get to 9 points and Fabi is already on 10. But I think for uh, everyone else, it is still possible to be in the top 4 and go into the knockout stage of the tournament. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game and the match. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Christian Sprang, uh, Kevin Clark, Henry Spragans, uh, Goran Soderwall, and Lokatos Gergo for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Magnus Invitational until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.